was hard. I couldn't root for a wife beater. I just couldn't root for a wife beater. Now, I still like Chris Brown, but she, he wasn't married to her. But <laughs> I couldn't root for a wife beater, man. It was hard for me to root for a wife beater. But I still think that, I mean, people talk about, I guess, in the next two years, Chris Paul, uh, Dwight Howard, uh, possibly looking at options and making some big trades. Uh, I, mean, that would, I mean, that would give you, insure up your center. Uh, that would give, absolutely give you the quickness mm -hmm. and the ability to get to the hole and relieve a lot of the pressure off of, uh, off of Kobe, uh, particularly with his knees and his issues of his health. Yeah. I mean, so what do we think about a big acquisition either next year or, or the year after? I think, um, I think Paul would be a good fit there because he's not a guy who needs to, to shoot to, you know, to be effective. He can come in and distribute because Kobe is still the alpha male on that roster. Mm. I think Howard is a guy, he's been used to having an offense built around him in Orlando. You don't know how Kobe, even though Kobe is getting older, he's still obviously one of the best players in the league. You know, how would he react to kind of phasing out his role and, and taking a secondary role on the offense? I don't know. You bring in Chris Paul, he makes everybody on the floor better. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's, he's fine with scoring five points and dishing the ball. So I think he might be a better fit for the roster as constructed. But, you know, if there are options out there. You know, Dwight would love to come to L.A., though, for the Hollywood. He would. All the attention. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And he could probably do it to Kim Kardashian and everybody else has. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting to win the lottery so I can go out on a date with Kim Kardashian. <laughs> but it has to be a big lotto. You just can't win, like, $30 million and expect to get a date. Right. She looked at you like, it was only $30 million. After they take away half of that in taxes, you're down to $15 million. Well, Chris Humphreys can't be making that much money, can Yeah, he? man, that's true. <laughs> yeah, certainly that. So I, I might have a shot, you know. I got a dollar bitty. Can we go to Crystal's or can we go to White Castle? She was like, what's White Castle? It's, it's, it's little bitty burgers. Uh, they're inexpensive. Well, they're more expensive than they used to be. So what about the Celtics? When we look at the Celtics, what about the Celtics? Hey. Ben's a little more optimistic about the Celtics. I, yeah. I'm a little, I think the window might be shut on their championship. I think they're just a, a little too old right now. There's not much they can do. They're going to sign. They traded uh, Kendrick Perkins, which was, a, I think, a, a mistake wow. midway yeah. through the season. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to end up re-signing Jeff Green. He's still on the bench, though. Uh, I'm not sure what they do to, to get that much better, though. I mean, they can build a Ron Rondo, but what, what do you do when you still have Kevin Garnett? We talk, he, he mentioned Kobe as an alpha male. Celtics have three alpha males, maybe probably four when you include Rondo. So I'm not sure what they do to really get over the hump this year. I just don't know that they have a lot of roster flexibility to make changes. You know, they're, they're, they're over the cap as it is. You've got, like Rob mentioned, three, three stars who I don't know if they really want to accept lesser roles as they're, you know, Paul Pierce still feels he's a very good player and he is. Does, you know, does he want to come off the bench, you know, in favor of a younger athletic guy? I don't see that happening. So, you know, I, they're still going to be good. You have that much talent, you're going to be good. But I definitely think if the window's not shut, it's it's right there. And you know, next year they may still have a chance. But beyond that, I think they they really need to make some big changes. So is Diesel gone? Is the big man gone? Is he retired? Is he on the access van? I think he's is riding he off fishing? in the sunset. I think I think uh, he's done. Yeah. The O'Neill brothers are leaving. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it will be an, an exodus <laughs> of the O'Neill brothers. Yeah. So Jermaine and Shaquille O'Neal. So what do we think about Shaquille? I mean, I, my thoughts were over the last couple of years that his biggest issue was he's just too big right. to be his, at his age. And you saw it with Michael Jordan, moment of silence for Michael Jordan's last couple of years with the Wizards. <laughs> and you saw with Michael Jordan that when they get older, you have to get smaller to me. You don't get bigger. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at Shaq, it seems if he cut 30 to 40 pounds, it would increase his level of mobility. Uh, and he's still going to be a force in the paint, but he just seems too massive to me to be on a basketball court. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was decent in yeah. December, for sure. I mean, he was like, giving him maybe like eight, eight points, six boards. But yeah, you're right. His body was just breaking down yeah. over the course of the season. He can't. I don't think he has. I mean, I'm just speculating, obviously, but I don't know if he has the drive to really get in that kind of shape. No, at this point. I don't yeah, think so. And that's fine. I mean, I love Shaq. He yeah. had a legendary career. I mean, uh, there's no shame. What was he, 30, 39? Yeah. 30, yeah. It's okay 39 to walk off now. Yeah. Like, he's and done it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Brett Favre, at some point it has to come to an end. Right, yeah. yeah I exactly. mean, he may have wanted that, that, that mystical 20-year career, but it, 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 in his position and his size, it certainly, and as you said, I mean, he would have to put some intensive work into cutting 30 to 40 pounds. Right. Uh, I mean, he'd have to lean out. 
and, and, and he's known that for a few years he's now. known I mean, that for a few years yeah, there's been exactly. i mean when he was with the lakers even uh, being a laker fan i would I read up on him a lot and that was an issue with him and kobe well part of that feud was yep. he, he came in Condition. out of shape every, every, year. Year. every year and he didn't have the drive then when he was at his best and he was still getting 20 points 15 rebounds oh, yeah, in the game yeah. now he's more of a, a, a bit player and i think the injuries just are going to stack up and the fitness isn't there. And yeah. he seems a lot more interested in, I love Shaq, but he's a lot more interested, I think, in being famous and yeah. kind of being a personality now than, uh, than hitting the gym and getting ready for next movies. year. Yeah, Shazam Two, maybe. There you go, yeah. Shazam Two. Wow, <laughs> it'll be an immobile. That script. <laughs> that or, yeah, it shouldn't take too long. I think you could do that, like uh, ad lib script on uh, Shazam Two. Uh, maybe go back to rapping. You know, Lord knows we've done and spent enough I'm shows talking about. Uh, he could do the you know stanky leg two or stanky <laughs> leg three. Foosnickens? Uh, yes, yes Foosh absolutely. <laughs> and the Foosnickens. He did that freestyle in the club a couple years ago that was pretty good. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, I, I gotta say, he's, he still got it. I'm not gonna say anything <laughs> negative about Shaq's rap because he has a couple nice cuts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's got two or three hot songs uh, in his career. Test. Yes. Well, That's true. I mean, we were talking about, but was that our test on Sarah Quill? <laughs> on Prozac, is that the medicated version Which or the unmedicated test? There are There's some questions you just don't want answers to. You no, just I, let it go. <laughs> so let's look at the, uh, the uh, OKC and uh, the Grizzlies. Game seven, Sunday, uh, tomorrow. So what do we think? Who do we have in game seven? I'm going to go with OKC. I think, you know, that, arena, that, arena, yeah, that arena is going to be electric. Um, and they, you know, when it comes down to it, they have the best player on the floor in Kevin Durant. And mm -hmm. I'll take those odds every day of the week. I think Durant comes up big tomorrow, especially since he played so poorly last night. Mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll take OKC in a close game. Okay. It's Rob? A tough, I mean, it's been so up and down. I, I don't know. I need a minute to think. <laughs> oh. I'm going to take Oklahoma City, I think. I, I would like to see Memphis win. I like to pull for the underdog with the Lakers out. I'm just going to – I'm pulling for the Grizzlies. But I think playing at home – Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, I think they will that team to victory no matter what. I think the Grizzlies come out and play well. It's probably going to be a great game. I don't see a blowout happening, but I think uh, Kevin Durant is just going to be lights out. He had a bad game last night, and I don't think that happens two games in a row. No. So what about the front court of Memphis? I mean, let's say, I mean, if Randolph and, and, and Gasol, the other Gasol, Mark Gasol, I mean, better Gasol. the better Gasol now. Right now, he needs to lose weight too. He's chubby. Uh, <laughs> he needs to. He needs to. Get, he needs to like get some muscle mass or something because he's like built just like that. Uh, but let's say the front court shows up like they did last night. I mean, Randolph has proven that he can put up thirty. Oh, he's been. He's been uh, Gasol has proven he can put up twenty. Yeah. And I mean, that's. I mean, and OJ Mayo's putting up sixteen and a half, seventeen points a game. Uh, I mean, Conley. I mean, you still have. I mean. It, it, any, to me, it's on, you know, no pun intended, any given Sunday. I'm going with the upset because I think that, and, and certainly the home court advantage yeah. is huge. I mean, everybody's going to be in white. Uh, there'll be, you know, the whole, it'll be uh, energetic. It'll be a, a hyped environment. I've got, I have to go with an upset, though. I, I mean, I could say, you know, it's, every game has been back and forth. We mentioned last night, it's almost been a curse to have a lead in the first yeah, half of absolutely. the series because, you know, whoever's been down <coughs> seems to come back. And so, you know, that could be the case. Oklahoma City jumps out on a motion tomorrow and then Memphis grinds away in the second half and wins. I could see it happening. I mean, last night, though, yesterday, I mean, the game yesterday, though, it, it had Memphis up early, OKC coming back, and then Memphis closing it out. Right. So yesterday was a little different than, than probably what the series has been. Uh, but, you know, I was, I was shocked. I will say that. I mean, best player on the court, uh, the best one-two punch on the court. I mean, everything says OKC wins, but you have to pick an upset at some point. That's true. And Memphis has been, I mean, against the Spurs. People like them against the Spurs, but I don't think anyone a lot of people pick them to to beat them the way they, the, especially the way they beat yeah. them, and they really put it on them. Yeah. Uh, beat so them they, like stepchildren. Yes. <laughs> Plus, they're doing all this without Rudy Gay. Yeah, He's and all of this without Rudy Gay. Yeah. Oh, wow, those are the worst glasses in the world. <laughs> yeah. Rudy, word to wise, get rid of those glasses. Uh, but no, I mean, the, but I, I don't know. I mean, any, I think that certainly you'd have to, yeah, man, Vegas will give the advantage to uh, the Thunder. Uh, but I think that for me, I look at it and I say, I think it can still be competitive. And I'm, I have to pull for an upset at some point. Uh, I think it would be a huge upset. Yeah, oh yeah. But, uh, you know, people close out on other courts. Let's look at the next series. Uh, let's look at uh, whoever, let's, who do you like? What matchup do you like better with the Mavericks? 
now that they've been sitting around marinating for the last week? I would say uh, OKC. If you're a Dallas fan, I think I'd rather play the Thunder because there is only two scoring options. As good as Westbrook and Durant are, we've seen if one of them is off or both of them is off, they can be beaten. Yeah. You know, Memphis has, you mentioned the balance they have with, you know, Randolph and Gasol inside. Mayo's been playing well. Conley's had some big games. Uh, Sam Young has had a few highlight dunks. I oh, mean, yeah. they, I think they have a lot more balance, and so you have to take away a lot more things if you're Dallas as opposed to Oklahoma City. If you get an off night with Kevin Durant, there's a, a good chance you're going to win. Yeah. I would, I would think Dallas would want to play Memphis, actually, just because of Dirk Nowitzki. I mean, I don't think there's anyone that could, that could even slow him down. Zach Randolph, you can no. almost let him no. do his thing. He, you're not going to stop him, I don't think. I don't think Dallas has anyone that can stop him. Uh, Tyson Chandler can slow down Marcus Gasol. So it really just becomes who, who do you think is going to pull their team out, Dirk or Zach Randolph? And I'd take Dirk Nowitzki in that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm going to agree we brought up, but kind of for just different reasons, it's a little bit like I was saying before, I'm scared of Westbrook versus the Dallas defense because of that. I mean, he's just so athletic, he's so fast, and his ability to get in the lane, that will worry me for Dallas, whereas I think their defense might be better suited to kind of shut down like a slower paced team like Memphis, because Memphis is more of like a grind it out. Yeah, they're more of a half court, team. Mm -hmm. yeah, half court physical team. Right, and I think that fits, it's surprising, but it actually fits Dallas' style these days more. I think they could handle them. I don't know. It's crazy. I mean, I, everybody's doubting Memphis every step of the way. They could be in the finals. You know? yeah, yeah. yeah, it's hard very to bet against them at this point. Eight but. seed in the final. I mean, yeah. Who knows? yeah. I mean, that would be. Uh, and, and so that's what I, I have to say that, you know, if I was in Vegas, if I had to put a dollar down, I'd have to put it down on Memphis simply because of that. I mean, it's uh, similar to the NCAA you know, basketball, the you know, whole 64. And I mean, if you had a bracket this year, you could just sit like that son of a bitch on fire <laughs> and use that as baby wipes. Uh, because that's <laughs> what you I actually won the pool, but I only oh, had yeah. UConn was the only team I yeah, had in the final four. Of us. <laughs> well, yeah, somebody won every pool. Yeah, yeah. Somebody had when to win. The pool wasn't the issue. Somebody won every <laughs> pool, but it's how they won the pool, right. <laughs> you know. Versus, I wonder that, that if there was I, just somewhere in the world, was there one person that had it right? No. Nah. Somebody on ESPN had VCU in the final four. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, they, they must have been an alum. I don't know how you yeah, could yeah, yeah. I don't know how you could pick that Someone that filled out about 1,200 brackets. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. Just, just, everybody, turn. Just, just the odds. Randomly, <laughs> yeah. uh, and the odds came out. But uh, So that, so I think it's, you know, we certainly uh, look at it, and, and, and Nowitzki is, is a huge issue uh, uh, when we face with that. Let's go to a couple other NBA teams, uh, some thoughts. The Knicks. What do we think about uh, Melo? What do we think about Stoudemire? What do the Knicks have to do to, to, to go to the next level? Because they seem competitive with many of the premier teams this year uh, and during the season. And it seems as if you know, that tailed off, you know, certainly during the playoffs. But what do we think about the Knicks next year? What do the Knicks have to do to get to the next level? Depth. They yes. Get some, just more players. Yep. They got like three NBA players on that team, really. You know, mm -hmm. they need more guys. Yeah, they gave away a lot to get mellow. I, I thought it was a good idea at the time, but it definitely hurt the bench. It hurt their depth. Uh, you know, yeah, that, that, they're playing against the Celtics, and they played the Celtics competitively in the in the playoffs. But Bill Walker's, you know, 0 for 13. He's still hey, out there. You can't. Hey. Uh, he did. <laughs> That's a fact. He missed all he the shots he took in that game. But you have, you know, guys like you know, Sheldon Williams out there playing. Like just you had Anthony Carter guarding Anthony, Rondo in the Anthony playoffs. Carter. That's just not gonna. Yeah, you know, it's a good starting place with with Carmelo and Stoudemire. You you make that trade ten times out of ten to get somebody like Carmelo, but now you need pieces around him. You can't just have two guys. No. I mean, that, Chauncey. And, yeah, and, and Chauncey. But they and do have Chauncey. Great, but, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, Chauncey is you know, getting old also. Yeah. I mean, so that's, I mean, he's still been effective, though. Chauncey's still effective, but he is, I mean, he's starting to age. I mean, he's starting oh, yeah. something. Absolutely. He's going to make $14 million next yeah, year. Yeah, they picked up that option. Wow. Yeah. So fourteen million dollars better be more than effective. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you better be pretty good. But in the NBA, I don't know. I mean, everybody makes fourteen million dollars yeah. in the NBA. My mama can make fourteen million dollars. God rest her soul. Mama can make fourteen million dollars in the NBA. Uh, but uh, I mean, see, but uh, but I think, and that's the struggle is where the where's your support come from? Uh, do you have to find someone in the talent development and the talent in the NBA and the talent pool? Where does it? Where do we find that pool? So when we talk about the Lakers needing, when we talk about the Celtics needing youth and needing speed, and 
then you talk about the Knicks having supporting bench. I mean, where the hell did these people no, come from? That's exactly it. I keep saying, yeah. oh, the Celtics where do they come fine. from? They're going to get younger and more athletic. I don't want where? to address the next part of that question. Yeah. It's not going to come from the draft this year. You know, no. It's a pretty weak draft. Teams who are looking for help, immediate help.